All right, so welcome to my Peacemaker Season 1 review. I'm going to be reviewing the entire first season of The Peacemaker, the newest show from the DCEU, from the mind of James Gunn. From the very beginning when I was doing my episode reviews, I just had a feeling this show was a hit. But one thing I did kind of notice when watching it, if you remember, they dropped three episodes the first week because they wanted to give him more content, and that was actually very smart because if you watch just the first episode, it's good, but when you watch the first three, that's how it really feels like something special. And the show is definitely something special. Marvel, well not Marvel, Warner Media, excuse me, has something really special with this show because... I felt like The Peacemaker was the most fun I've had watching one of these superhero TV shows since Loki. Hawkeye did not give me this kind of enjoyment. I mean, WandaVision did somewhat, and and uh, uh, Bucky and, and Falcon was okay, but this one I thought was just a step above because James Gunn has that wacky, you know, toilet humor comedy, very witty, and it takes a talented group of actors to actually pull that off. And John Cena, without question, proved that he could be a very, very funny guy. He nailed it. There were so many lines and moments where he just shined. And his co-stars were also there. But to me, none shone brighter. Is that a word? Shone? Is it shined or shown? I don't know, man. English is not my first language. But none was brighter than Robert Patrick playing Christopher's dad, Peacemaker's dad. He was a complete scumbag of a character, just a genuine bad person stuck in like the mentality of people from 200 years ago. But man, was he fun to watch. The stuff he would say was so outlandish and finding out about the backstory with, you know, Christopher, Peacemaker and his brother and all that, like that really like made me dislike the dude. But I really loved it whenever he was on screen because he was so damn funny, you know. I'll be honest, like, and I've said this before, if you know me, you know that I like edgy humor. Like, I usually am into stuff that kind of crosses boundaries a little bit. Um, that's why I love 80 stand-up comedians like Richard Pryor, George Carlin. These guys did not give a shit. And James Gunn has that spirit with him because this show is unlike any other superhero show. It really is like a Suicide Squad continuation. Even when James Gunn does stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy... There's not that much profanity and not that much, like, wild jokes. This one was loaded. John Cena said the F word so many times in this show, yo. This is the same guy who had a squeaky clean image when he was the WWE champion, like, you know, a few years ago. When he was still a top guy representing the company. Now he's an actor. He did a great job. The story, to me, was probably the weakest thing about the episode. I Or about the season, I'm sorry. I never cared about the butterflies. I cared about the story with John and his dad or Chris and his dad. I cared about, you know, some of the other characters. I cared about that. But I never cared about the villains. It was They were kind of weak. I mean, then at the end with the big larva, it just was not... That was probably the weakest... That was, to me, the weakest part of this show was the villains. I don't think they really held up. And I want to see something a bit more creative going forward. Now, not just, you know, not the Peacemaker was not just the only great aspect of this show. And as a hero, the Vigilante was also a very, very special character with a very special actor. I could tell that the episodes that were directed by James Gunn were a lot wackier. You could just tell. But some of the other directors did a pretty good job too. But they were kind of more dealing with some of the more emotional stuff. Like the backstory with Chris and his brother. And what's going on with um with Leota. And I gotta say, I, you know, I love that character. The fact that she had to struggle with being Amanda Waller's daughter. Having to be stuck in the middle of all these like, you know, crazy people pretty much. And I also really like the fact that she was a lesbian. But they didn't push any kind of woke agenda or any kind of LGBT stuff. Like I, I'm okay with, you know, LGBT things in media, obviously, because I have so many friends that are in that, you know, persuasion, I guess you can say. But, you know, it this did not feel like DC was trying to appeal to them because yes, she was a lesbian, yes, she was married, but it was and even though she you know her, her character arc is about her family partially 
it wasn't like they threw it in your face to where it was they were trying to appeal to gays. I don't think that was the case at all. I think that was just her being herself, and they turned it into a few jokes here and there. And that's really, like, I like the way they did that. It wasn't made up to be a big deal at all. The character arc was more about the connection between Leota and Amanda Waller, not Leota and her wife. Now, season two might change that, but so far, that's how it is. Vigilante, I said, was great. You know, I mentioned that. And I also really liked how the characters started to bond little by little. It wasn't like they just all of a sudden got along. And it wasn't like they had, you know, ongoing issues that didn't make any sense. You know, they really didn't know each other or trust each other. And it took some pretty serious shit to get them to really work together to be able to solve this problem. You know, and there were a lot of surprises, especially near the end. Now, I gotta say this. Even though I love Peacemaker and it's a show that... I think everybody should watch, man. I wish the entire DCEU was like this. Um, there were a little, there were some small criticisms there. Like, for example, not every episode was a hit. Also, I do feel like they did peak early. I think the second to last episode, episode seven, was better than episode eight. I liked the violence and how they were, you know, fighting these guys. It was really, really gory. I enjoyed that. You know, I really did. It reminded me of the Suicide Squad movie. But when you go past that, the episode, yeah, it was fine, but to me, and it was a good finale, but to me, episode 7 was much more enjoyable. Like, when he shot his dad in the forehead, dude, I was like, that was, like, probably the most shocking thing of the entire season, because I wasn't expecting that at all. I was not thinking they were going to go in that direction, and they did, and it's okay, I, but I legitimately didn't think they were going to do that. But the last episode did tie up loose ends, uh, for the most part. Um, and, you know, they had that Justice League cameo, which apparently a lot of fans didn't like because I guess they couldn't get Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot, who, by the way, are like super A-list actors, so they're probably not doing the TV shows, but they did get Aquaman and Flash, and I really enjoyed that, you know, that, that exchange between them, you know, like, that was a cool little cameo, like, I don't know why people were so mad, like, and I guess some folks were mad because, you know, it's uncharacteristic, but I, I totally disagree with that. Aquaman is kind of a joker, you know, my man, you know, he's, he's not, he's not a super serious guy at all, you know, at least not the way that Jason Momoa portrays him, so I mean, I, I think that fit perfectly, yo, in fact, hell, it made me want to, I don't know if he's the right guy, but James Gunn could direct the uh, 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 Justice League movie and it'd be wacky, but that does seem to be a bit more serious, and I think James Gunn is better at doing the more lighthearted stuff than doing the serious stuff. And I'm not saying he can't do serious. That's not what I'm saying because he's talented enough to do that. But what I'm saying is use his strengths. And I'm so happy that Peacemaker did get renewed for a second season because we're going to get more. And I guess James Gunn's writing and directing all of it. So I just, again, y'all, I wonder how Batman, I'm sorry, how the Flash and Flashpoint is going to figure into this if they're really going to erase it or not. That's the one thing that's been in the back of my head for a while because I feel like they should just move forward from where they're at instead of going back. But if Flashpoint will have time travel that's supposed to screw up the entire Snyder, everything Snyder built. And if that's the case, that's not very good, man. Peacemaker was a, was a solid, solid show and I had a lot of fun watching it. Tell your friends about it if you haven't seen it on HBO Max. Leave a comment, of course, and tell me what you thought about Peacemaker and your favorite aspect of it, and maybe your favorite episode, too. I look forward to reading it, and if you're new, subscribe to World of Geekdom. I'll talk to you soon.